Happy 4th of July holiday to everybody. I just want to talk today briefly on, I, I mentioned the book Battle for Investment Survival by Gerald Loeb. It's an old book, kind of a classic, uh, investment classic book. On, you can get it on Amazon. And the, he has another one called The Battle for Stock Market Profits, which is a harder to find one that you have to kind of buy. You can get that online too, but you buy the print copy. Most likely there's no audio or anything like that. So I mentioned in a previous podcast that I like this guy and I thought that I really like the way he thinks about the market. And I wanted to talk about one concept today I've picked up that I've used myself, but I never really articulated it like he did. And he calls it the ruling reason. So he says that you know, this can be swing trading, uh, position trading. I mean, it could be investing even or day trading. This works for everything, I think. But sometimes in the market, your job, a lot of times, especially in what, if we talk day trading for, for a second first, Oftentimes, though, there's what I would call a macro day, and you get those a few times a month, and it's when I'm looking at bond yields, and there's a big one-way move, like a panic move or a risk-on, risk-off, or there's some kind of a everything's moving the same way type of a day. And a lot of those macro days are, they could be a Fed day when it shakes, it shakes this way, it shakes that way, then it kind of makes its big move, or a surprise report that does or doesn't follow through and, and creates like a huge move and, and re, repositioning as opposed to a lot of days that are more technical and there's not a lot going on and there's just movement back and forth and you could have trends, but it's not, it's not that way. So on, on those days and in those periods in the market, a lot of times there's things that will, if you can lock on to the right things that are in vogue at the moment, you can pick up on what, what he calls the ruling reason. And the way I, I look at that is like in 2008, I was kind of always staying in front of, um, you know, I was watching the bank order books like the bids and offers and Merrill Lynch and JP Morgan and, and the futures were getting led by those things because it was all a bank crisis. I would listen to the conference calls live of the banks and they were leading the market. I watched broker dealers um, when they got in trouble, those were leading the market. And that was the, the ruling reason, if you use his terminology, those are the, that was what mattered at the time the most and the other stuff didn't matter as much. And Earlier, we did a podcast about finding the bottom and the bottom being that day ended up being the bottom for a few weeks and then we made a new low in the market. But it was noticing that AMD and NVIDIA and Apple kind of went down last. Everything else had gone down and they started selling the, the quality stuff last. And we talked about waiting until either the first hour or the last hour of the day is often where they make those big moves if they're going to have a shift. And then when, when the market kind of ran out of steam after they sold those quality names at the end of the day, after everything else had already been beaten up for weeks, the market was kind of done and then there was nobody left to sell. And then we have a nice big rally and it kind of snowballed on itself and, and it moves into the close. So the ruling reason on that day was just recognizing that that those names were getting flushed. And once those got flushed, there's really nothing left to get flushed for the short term. And I think what the point here is that if you can figure out um, the ruling reason for each day or each period that you're in, a lot of times you can shortcut a lot of work. And you can look at five, six, seven things that matter. But a lot of times nothing matters if you figure out the right reason. So just some more examples to make this a little bit more clear. So he mentions that when you're looking at a stock, maybe for two weeks or two month type of a move, like a swing or a position trade, there could be a v- variables that move the stock. There could be the future earnings prospects. There could be legislation that is for or against the company. There could be a new innovative product that everyone's excited about. Or there could be this general neglect or apathy for the business prospects of it. And if you see that rapidly changing, he calls this investor regard. You can also look at it as the theme, like you know the hot theme or whatever class cloud stocks or cybersecurity stocks or whatever. But when when a, a stock can double, so a stock can go up 5x if the earnings only go up 2x if everyone if the investor regard picks up, meaning that everyone thinks earnings doubled but they think they're going to go up 5 or 10x, so the stock actually moves way ahead of that because it's not just the earnings, it's the regard for the future that also gets piped in. So the biggest moves are when you have earnings and you have regard. But if you have a lot of neglect and you just have earnings, it could move and move. But if that investor regard never comes, you don't get that huge multiple expansion that you could get. I mean, Apple had a lot of that when it was just a hardware company. Then it switched into being valued as a software company. And then they got that investor regard and that and that, that was the main key thing. And once that flipped, the stock basically doubled in valuation. Um, it made more money, but it didn't make as much more money as it it was valued higher based on the investor regard for future things, looking at it more as a software company. That was the new narrative that took hold. And a lot of people predicted that and did very well. And others just, you know, did that's not their trade. So if you can figure out the ruling reason 
when you're doing something during the day, there's usually one or two things that matter. And if you can lock onto them, this is not every day either. This is uh, maybe on busier days or busier periods. But I think part of being really good at making a lot of money during a busy period versus just taking a little bit out. A lot of times what you'll find is that there's certain things that if you're reading and you're observing and you're keeping up in, I'll give you more examples. It could be watching high yield debt. Um, in 2008, high yield debt led us a lot on the way down. Want keeping track of the bond, of the credit stresses in that market could give you a little bit of an edge. It could be understanding of right now, it's obviously inflation numbers are kind of everything at the moment and the leading indicators around those how we react to those. Sometimes it's looking at bonds, short-term bonds, because they're going to be really sensitive to inflation. So these things sometimes don't matter at all. They matter zero a couple of years ago, and all of a sudden they're, they're first and foremost. So you have to take into account what a lot of that stuff is doing when you're trading. And I think tech, a lot of these tech names that have been completely blown out at some point will come back into the game. But Right now, they're just not as important. It's it, they're over owned and getting you know wrung out and getting revalued. So going forward, it's figuring out okay, what kind of day may it be or may not, and that's the next paid podcast we're going to do. By the way, is on uh, different kinds of days, how to prepare and how to maybe um, anticipate. And one of the days that we we like to trade, it, it doesn't happen to be some of my better days, but days that I can predict decently well what might happen are days after a trend day. Call it morning after trend day. There's um, a, a bias to mean revert. So after a huge trend day up or down, the next day, big trend moves um, either against the previous day or with the previous day are usually faded back into the range. And the tricky part is sometimes the it can go a lot further than you think. It can make a huge move and then it fades back later in the day. So just being aware of that tendency. And it, it's just a human psychology thing of everyone wants to either think it's a reversal or think it's going to keep going and it has everyone excited or if you're stuck, it has you panicking if it continues the same way the next day. So it sets up that kind of uh, you know, fear and then back into the range type of a trade. So that's something that you know, what you do is you, you recognize that ahead of time as a possibility when you see a trend day. And then um, I just keep many charts and examples. A lot of them are in my head, but you could print off the chart and start keeping a bind or a book just of um, how does the market trade after a trend day and you get those and you watch those charts and maybe you make notations of news or things that happened and you start to build a playbook of, okay, after trend days, I'm comfortable trading action that's never the same, but it, it rhymes, it's similar-ish. And you start to build a way that I know one guy who, this is his main strategy, this is all he does really is master and get up at night when Europe has a trend day and trade that the next day and look at it in, in stocks. But you have to be careful with stocks and commodities. They can just trend and trend and trend. Whereas equity indexes don't tend to trend three, four days in a row. It just almost never happens. Very rare. Sometimes in a huge market switch, you'll get two days of trending in a row. But I mean, and you get three like very, very rarely, like every few years, if that, not even that much. Um, we did get two in a row a couple of times during this crash down, but um, it's rare, very rare. So in a, in a normal market, 90 plus percent of the time, there's a there's something to be done or built and I'm not much of a mean reversion type trader, so it tends to be more like mini little trends in the day that um, will put up, push us from an extreme back into the middle. And I'll, I'll trade a little smaller on these days, but I also feel like I understand the the kind of day it could be. So I can have a decent success rate, but it's not um, it's not my bread and butter type of thing. But for some people, it it's just another avenue to explore, uh, another thing to look into. So we'll talk about that on, on the other podcast. But um Back to the, the ruling reason. And then uh, the investor, the idea of investor regard for something is more of um, you know, getting ahead of the narrative or the theme. I think it's a little less applicable to day trading. Super important for position and swing trading though. Understanding what everyone thinks. And you know, is that priced in or not priced in? Or is it do you have an idea that something's gonna move very differently to how people think? And that can be if the charts line up with that and you're right, that could be a huge catalyst for a large move. So a lot of times um, that's why when things are very neglected and there's a surprise and you think that it's a serious thing that's going to continue, that neglect can be a huge uh, springboard for a further rally as the people regard that whole situation differently. Um, and that, that stuff also pools down during the day. So it's not just as simple as... Um, it, keeping an eye on, you don't have to trade on the news. I mean, I, I'm aware of the news, but it's not that you're getting the news and you're going to click in and make a bunch of money as much as it's understanding how everyone else is thinking, how they're positioned. And when something happens that is, in, is counter to that, do how do we act? And if we act, 
um, in a way that's confusing and we start setting up patterns that look predictable, there could be a very large move coming that you can jump in if you're aware of kind of the, the reasons that matter and then what the market's doing. So it always does help to, to understand the constant um, changing narrative and flows of things because it won't matter um, probably for 75 or 80% of the days, but then on some of those days it does matter and it matters in a big way. And a lot of times for me, those days will make, that'll be my whole month or majority of the month on one or two of those days because I, I can latch on to, you know, this is kind of what everyone's chewing on and we got something that should be good and it just it just didn't work that way. and Or it, it started to work and then it, caught everybody and then didn't work and then there's technical areas above or I feel like they're going to take all this stuff out now and it, this is a another way I look at it is this it's it's at the end of the day what's the newspaper going to say about the day and sometimes when a surprising event happens and it starts to move in a way I don't expect I say okay at the end of the day they're going to run with this headline and I can already see that it's people are getting screwed it's not doing what it's supposed to and this is probably the headline that's going to run and sometimes that helps me get into the mindset of um, you know, this, the market's doing something strange today and it's, it's going to continue to go that way because, um, there's a lot of people on the other side. And I think well, so right now just, and we have this inflation thing going on and most people seem to think that inflation's peaking and it's going to roll over. Commodity prices are rolling over. I don't know if it's true or not. I mean, it looks like they're rolling over, but I don't really care so much about all that. I just want to know what's happening. The bonds are starting to price that in. They're starting to head back up. Yields are getting a little bit lower. We're starting to worry more about recession and growth, which is going to mean that consumer confidence numbers are important in addition to inflation. Retail sales numbers are important. Inventories are important of retailers because all that stuff is, are, are we going to start to spend? Are people going to spend? Uh, or is it going to be a growth issue now? And are we going to have some kind of a delicate balance between the two? So it's putting into play those numbers. Employment's also important. This stuff hasn't been important in a long time. When I first started trading, numbers were really, really important. And you'd sit over your screen and never would you miss a number because it would shape the whole day. And that's kind of, it, it's, it's coming back into play a lot more than it did, I would say, for the previous many, many amount of years where numbers just haven't really been as important. But now, now they are because the Fed's in play. So um, when you're trading during the day, it's all that stuff is now baked into what you do. It's um, understanding what's expected, what happens, how do we act. And um, that, that's kind of my ramble on the ruling reason. And once in a while, you'll lock into something that it's the reason for the day and everything else doesn't really matter if you get that right.